you're a therapist, subleasing office space can be a great option, whether you're renting from someone else or renting out your extra space. However, there's a lot to consider before doing so. Today, we'll discuss the right way to handle subleasing, as shared with us by licensed clinical social worker Allison Perrier. Before we get started, be sure to click the subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos from Therapy Notes. When thinking about subleasing, the most important thing to have in place is a well-written contract. A contract should include the specific days or time span that each of you are in possession of the office, in addition to the duration of the sublease, the amount of rent the subtenant pays, and how much the rate will increase from contract to contract where applicable. You'll also want to factor in utility costs such as electricity, water, or Wi-Fi. Don't forget to include details on how the office will be maintained. The person you're working with may not share your opinion on how neat the space should be kept, and writing down your expectations can prevent miscommunication. You could agree to divide office chores, but hiring a cleaning service to come in once or twice a month and splitting the cost might be the best option. Next, be sure that both parties are clear about what a potential breach in the subleasing agreement would look like. A handshake and good intentions don't always cut it in these situations, and it's better to be crystal clear legally and financially before entering into this relationship, just in case. Once your contract is worked out, talk about the things you expect that aren't legally contractual, like a mutual expectation that both of you will keep the office in good condition. While the leaseholder has more legal power, the subtenant shouldn't be afraid to speak up about how they want to use their space. As with most things in life, it's a matter of balancing boundaries and maintaining flexibility in addition to having grace for people and holding them to the standards that they've agreed to. That said, if the situation becomes unbearable, get out. It's not worth having your private practice experience ruined by a bad roommate. This all may sound scary, but it's important to remember why subleasing is a popular option for mental health professionals. Subleasing is an amazing way to get the most out of an office space and reduce your overhead. With an agreed-upon contract and careful consideration of your fit with the other person, you can avoid conflicts and create a mutually beneficial relationship. Have you ever subleased or been a subtenant? What was your experience? Let us know in the comments. To see more content from Therapy Notes, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. Thanks for watching!